Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where we're back with the knockout coverage of the World Cup. This time Brazil versus South Korea. 4-1 win for Brazil and probably the most one-sided game that we've seen at the competition so far, apart from that game between Spain and Costa Rica. Considering this was a knockout game, this was so one-sided and Tite got his tactics spot on, South Korea very much didn't and as a result Brazil absolutely destroyed them. Brilliant performances for Brazil all over the pitch, so let's just get into this and look at why they had so much success and why the South Korean approach was so bad. It, everything about it was wrong. So, it starts with Brazil on the ball, of course it does, and looking to play their way out from the back because we know that Brazil want to have possession, so they play out to the centre-backs. From here, South Korea kind of pressed in a 4-4-2, but also kind of a bit of a 4 triple 2 So, the strikers were pushing up towards the centre-backs, which then means, as a result, your midfielders have to come up as well, and your wingers are doing the same. So we can kind of see this 2-2-2 two, two, two shape here. The problem, or well, one of the problems I should say that they had was that whilst the rest of the team was pressing high, the defence wasn't because they were so scared of what was going in behind. So typically you might expect the centre-backs to squeeze right up here when you're pressing, but instead they still held a reasonably deep position like so. And we'll come on to it shortly, that is obviously going to cause them problems. Those of you that, you know, know your tactics, you can't have your midfield and your front line high and your defense deep it doesn't really work so from here what i found was the problem was how easily the brazilian players were out to able to kind of like escape this press so the first thing that we can see is that they've gone man for man here with the wingers and the strikers and the two midfielders the first problem we have is that brazil have an extra midfielder so you can't sit up in a 4-4-2 and go man for man when there's a free midfielder especially when the free midfielder is one of the best players to have ever played the game. You can't leave Neymar as a free man. Like, whoever made that decision, absolutely incredible. Because it meant that at times, literally, Brazil could get it straight from the centre-backs, go straight into Neymar and turn from there. Because whilst these South Korean forwards were pressing high, they weren't necessarily pressing with intensity. So Thiago Silva had the time, and we know he's a good passer of the football. So there were situations where he could fire it into someone like Neymar. The other thing that Brazil occasionally done was move Neymar more into the left half space, Paqueta into the right half space, and then got Casemiro dropping in the middle. Now, again, if you're South Korea, that's not actually a bad position for him to be in, because you can kind of use that as a bit of a pressing trigger. He can get the ball in here, and then you kind of close in on him, suffocate him, and force him to go backwards. Because to an extent, if you can stop Casemiro getting on the ball, you can kind of stop Brazil playing, because he's the one where the move kind of starts, that's where they play from. But no, they didn't do that. Instead, for example, the striker here would cut the passing lane, right? Just thinking, we've got Casemiro covered. Casemiro literally half the time just had to step to one side, he could get the ball, turn, and then again he can play from there, and Casemiro is a player with excellent long passing, which means that he could then spray passes out to the wingers, or go in behind, or into the feet of Richarlison. Again, it was just way too easy. In terms of uh, South Korea pressing, it was absolutely awful, and it allowed Brazil to get out, and at time and time and time again, just get straight at the Korean defence. Whether it was Neymar getting the ball in this area and carrying it, whether it's Paqueta, whether it's Rafinha taking on his fullback in a one versus one, which is absolutely deadly, even more so the case on the left hand side with Vinicius Jr., all whilst Richarlison is trying to stretch the defence making runs in behind. Recipe for disaster, and Brazil just tore them to shreds. When South Korea are trying to press, the shape was awful, it allowed Brazil to get through. Before we continue with the analysis, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that's the latest home shirts, the latest away shirts, tracksuits, or even retro kits, Jersey FIFA has a bit of everything. There really is something for everyone, so if you are interested, then make sure to use the link in the description down below and head to JerseyFIFA.com. Brazil were also very dangerous in sustained possession as well, and again, it was awful tactically from South Korea. I do not know what they were doing. So what Brazil would do would basically move Militao into kind of a centre-back role in a back three. We know that he is naturally a centre-back, so when he plays right-back, he doesn't really want to overlap and get forward. He prefers kind of tucking in alongside his two centre-backs here, forming this back three. Casemiro could then move into like a right midfield position, and then Danilo would come inside into here, forming a 3-2. Not always quite as narrow as this, sometimes a little bit wider, but really narrow. And whether he was on the ball or not, that was a problem. So... What, what are the problems that this causes? So one of the problems is that Korea are pressing with a front two. Now they are against a three. They're outnumbered. It makes it very difficult to do. It's just very difficult to press from here. And it also means that these wider centre-backs now can kind of step outside of the front two like this into this area here and also into this area here. The other issue that South Korea had was that the right winger here, Lee, because Danilo was moving inside, Lee was also doing the same. He didn't need to. 
He didn't need to be there. If they'd have just dropped their strikers deeper like this, put them on those two midfielders, it would have made their lives so much easier because then Lee could have defended this wide area. But that didn't happen. So instead, we've got the two South Korean forwards taken out of the game easily by one pass. So Lee tries to stop that. He comes forward uh, narrow, sorry, onto Danilo. But now look what it's done. Look how much space it has opened up over here. And Thiago Silva just spent this, like the first half of this game in particular, just walking into this area. It really, really was so, so easy. And when you've got Neymar in this area as well, also drifting into this left side, the midfielder doesn't want to come out and press him because he doesn't want to expose his defence. It meant that there were a lot of occasions where Neymar could get the ball here, genuinely unchallenged initially. And like I was saying a couple of minutes ago, he's one of the best players that the game has ever seen. You can't let him get the ball and not only take like one touch before you engage, but two, three, four, five. There was situations where he's taking five touches before a defender even gets close to him. And with Paqueta also pushing up in the half space here into this channel here, Neymar doing it on the left hand side, the South Korean midfield just got completely overwhelmed. Huang on the left hand side didn't really do anything from a defensive point of view. So we can see again they've got this four versus three in the middle of the pitch here with Lee not really contributing too much. Neymar, Paqueta in the half spaces and what this eventually meant was that Brazil had a front five in Rafinha, Paqueta, Richarlison, Neymar and Vinicius Jr. up against a back four. That's going to be difficult for the best defenders in the world to deal with, right? Like if you picked four of the best defenders in history and put them in a four versus five against this attack, they would struggle. South Korea don't have the best defenders in history. They've got some good players in there, but they can't leave themselves outnumbered like this. You can't be outnumbered against this Brazilian attack because it's absolutely frightening. They are so good and the interplay is so good, the link play is so good, but also the individual ability, the skill, the ball carrying. They just make stuff happen out of anything. So tactically, it was absolutely awful. It was so, so easy. When Neymar getting the ball in here, that of course draws gravity. We see the Koreans kind of trying to shift across, trying to stop Neymar getting on the ball. Everyone runs across and then the ball just goes backwards to Casemiro. Paqueta makes a sort of narrow run like this, which drags the fullback. And now Casemiro can switch the ball out to Rafinha. And then again, we've got a situation where Rafinha is unchallenged, can get the ball, can get out the defence, get into these areas and put the ball into the box, which is, of course, actually how the route started, that first goal. But it happened all night long. Brazil working the ball, particularly down its left-hand side. South Korea get massively drawn over to it. The ball comes backwards to Casemiro, he switches it, and then Brazil attack down the right-hand side with Paqueta and Rafinha, both putting in very, very good performances. I think Rafinha's been a bit quiet so far this tournament, but last night, absolutely brilliant. And, of course, there was also plenty of occasions where on the left-hand side, they had a lot of success as well. Yes, there were situations when they were looking to switch to play out to the right and kind of take advantage of the overload, with, again, Paqueta's movement being good. But there were also plenty of occasions where Neymar was taking three or four players on in these areas. Vinicius doing something similar, left-hand side, where he's 1v1 with his fullback, constantly looking to take him on. Brazil have so much quality in these wide areas that if you leave yourself 1 versus 1 against them, they really are going to hurt you. Probably the highlight of the match for me was Neymar skilling past the ref as well. Uh, the ref tried his best to get in the way, but Neymar beat him as well as two South Korean players. That was a bit of a personal highlight for me. But in general, Brazil were absolutely brilliant. They put South Korea... Or they put themselves, I should say, out of sight very, very quickly. And South Korea then went more attacking, which just continued to play into Brazil's hands. So because Brazil had taken the early lead, and actually an early comfortable lead, they were then happy to sit off in a mid-block shape when they didn't have possession of the ball. And from here, the way that South Korea looked to approach this and looked to break it down just left themselves more exposed. What the game plan was on the ball, I'm not too sure. They, it seems like they just went, let's get at them. Let's go toe for toe. Let's try and, let's try and score goals against this Brazil team. So they would bring Lee from the right-hand side inside, get the right back forward. Down the left, Huang held the width a little bit more and then the left back would underlap. And we can see that initially Brazil were defending in quite a nice 4-4-2 shape. But if Brazil are going to win the ball back which they've done on plenty of occasions because in Casemiro you have one of the best ball winners of all time and I think he really is establishing himself as maybe the best holding midfielder we've ever seen but in this game in particular again that ability to win the ball break up the play in these areas but then because Korea have pushed their fullback so high you're leaving Neymar and Richarlison two versus two against your centre-backs whilst also knowing that the Brazilian wingers have the pace to get forward and if they want to they can make it a four versus two certainly a four versus three it was just so easy for Brazil. Eventually, uh, South Korea kind of reacted and went, all right, we'll pull our fullbacks back. That, that will stop those pesky wingers getting forward. 
that will stop the isolations back here. Brazil kind of went, okay, you can do that, but we're going to be brave as well. And they pushed Vinicius Jr. right up on the one fullback, Rafinha right up on the other fullback. So even when Korea had the ball, they knew that the second they lost the ball, which again they did because of Militao, Marquinhos, Thiago Silva, Casemiro, it was now going to be a four versus four on the counter-attack. And again, as I was saying earlier on, you cannot leave yourself isolated against these Brazilian players because they are just incredible. They really are absolutely fantastic. And honestly, I'm amazed they didn't score more. There were chances where Neymar was getting into these areas, Richarlison, Rafinha, Vinicius Jr., the substitutes when they came on as well. If Brazil wanted to, they could have made this 7-8-9 comfortably. This could have been 6-0 at halftime. Brazil genuinely had the chances. And... On another day, they would have scored more goals because they got into some really good positions, really good opportunities, but it didn't quite create the actual chances themselves. But they didn't need to because Korea was so bad. Brazil was so good. It was a perfect day for Tite. It allowed him to bring uh, Neymar back in the, into the team, get him some minutes, but also protect him a little bit, get him the goal. Like I said, Casemiro, absolutely brilliant, but it, the whole team was just absolutely fantastic. The, the quality of goals we saw were a joke. Brazil really meant business in this game. Like I said, well, they probably only meant business for one half because second half they kind of laid off it a bit. But the damage was done in the first half. Brazil kind of looked terrifying. However, South Korea were horrendous. South Korea couldn't have set up much worse unless they just put seven players out. Tactically, I don't know what the manager was doing. Maybe I would love to see an interview with him where he tries to explain it a little bit. He got everything wrong. He approached Brazil in almost the exact opposite way to how you should approach Brazil. But hey-ho. We live and learn. I hope you guys have learned something from this video. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. How good were Brazil? How bad were Korea? How far are Brazil going to go in this tournament? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. Also, while you're here, if you could subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. That would be a massive help. Apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.